This lesson's on charting in Excel. I get a lot of questions about charting in Excel and there seems to be a lot of confusion. And a lot of it is because of the way people's data is set up or they really don't know what it is they wanna chart. So you, you've gotta give that some thought first. We've got a lot of information here and, and just grabbing everything and asking for a chart really wouldn't make any sense. We've got different things here. We've got uh, what state they're from, what city, uh, the name of the store, which quarter they're in, sales, and then you got coupons, ingredients, labor, and net profit. I mean, these are all totally different things. And to chart all of this would make no sense whatsoever. So first determine what is it that I want to chart. Now, I've set this up with uh, some subtotals. So here I've got uh, categories and I've got their subtotals. Now, if you wanted to chart that, that would actually make sense, right? But grabbing all the data in between wouldn't make any sense at all. You just got too much information. So uh, one of the tips I give my students often is try to use titles and totals when you're charting. Titles and totals. If you select the titles and totals, you can usually do a pretty decent job. So here I've got titles and totals. And people love pie charts. Love them. Now, the thing with pie charts, you can only chart one thing at a time. You can only chart one series at a time. If I wanted to chart uh, California's titles and I wanted to do totals, sorry, in, in Oregon's, and Washington's. I can't do that on a pie chart. I can only do one. I can compare them to one another, but I couldn't do all three on one pie chart. It wouldn't make sense. So when you're ready to insert a chart, you can come here and there's this great new tool that I read about called recommended charts. I can't get it to work. It doesn't recommend anything. And yet when I go to charts here, any one of these works just fine, right? So here I've got a nice, it's giving me a preview as well. So it's showing me how my sales are here, right? And then we've got all these other things here. So I'd be able to hit OK and I'd get a chart for that. And then later we're going to learn how to name them, etc. And I'd be able to do the same. Uh, I probably shouldn't have included net profit, but I did. <clears throat> now I could do the same for the next store. And I'm just using my control key to select the titles and the totals. And again, recommended the charts, nothing. So I'm going to go to pie and OK. And now if I wanted to compare the two, then I can compare the two, right? And from what I can see here, they're very, very similar. So a pie chart can only do one data series at a time. So understand that. If I wanted to compare all, all three, then I can use other types of charts. So I'm using my control key here. All right, and now I can go back to insert and recommended charts, nothing once again. But here I can see that I'm already getting a pretty good idea, right? And I know that series one is my first, okay, so my first one, uh, California, and then Oregon is series two, right? And Washington is series three. And then I can go to bar chart. So now I've got a pretty decent comparative analysis I'm also able to switch the rows and the columns. So here instead, so here I'm getting my stores and then I'm getting those other things here. I'm gonna show you how to change these labels later, but you're able to switch things around very easily. And then if you don't like this type of chart, if you wanna change the chart type back to column, you could. Now it probably would have been a better idea if I wouldn't have chosen um, net profit as well. So just sales, coupons, ingredients, labor, or um, better yet, maybe just our, what we're losing from our sales would probably make more sense. So we can go here. So again, it, it really depends what it is you're looking to chart. So here I'm charting things that take away from our sales and from our profit. Okay, so here, these are my stores, and those are my categories. So that is a logical chart that makes sense to me. Other things that you can chart, here I've got from quarter one, these are my stores, right? These are my five stores, and these are my profits. 
for those stores, right? So I could put that, that would make sense to go in a pie chart for sure. And here I have <clears throat> the, the, the sizes of the pies, the slices of the pie for each of those locations. And it's giving me my labels right over here. You've got this quick layout button, which is very handy. So here it includes not only the names, but the percentages. And you can add even more information here. So I'm just hovering here and it's showing me what this is going to look like. So you would pick the one that you like the most, right? And then you'd select it and then you'd have a nice, fast, easy chart for that. You've got different options in here as well. I mean, it's never been as easy as it is now to produce just an amazing chart that represents exactly what you want it to represent. You could got, you have color schemes to choose from, fast and easy. It's actually quite amazing. The other thing you need to know is that these numbers are connected to this chart. So if any of these numbers change, it the chart will accommodate that. So if I change this to, let's say a million, that's really gonna change things around, right? And that chart, okay, changed automatically. So your chart will adjust, adjust to the data. Those are dynamically linked. So now I have a, a really good example here for you uh, as far as charting uh, and how to set up your data to chart. I have a situation where what I really want to do is I want to, I want to be able to chart and compare on a chart uh, my totals for, for these four things, uh, for California, for Oregon, and for Washington. And I tried um, a bunch of ways to select different labels and different things and to, and, and to get a decent chart, and I couldn't do it. I just couldn't. So what I ended up doing, and, and I have to do this often, and I recommend you do this as well, is I set up another area here, like a summary area, or you can even do it on a different sheet. And I simply copied these labels here, and then I, cop I simply typed out the states here, and I copied and pasted the values of the totals, right? So you can do that with a link, or you can just copy and paste the, 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 the values themselves. Uh, don't copy and paste the, the cell because there's a formula in there. It's going to mess it up. So I've got the totals and I've got the labels in a nice, neat little area. And now, again, I'm selecting titles and totals, right? So I got titles and then the totals that I want. And now when I go to insert and I ask for a chart of some type, I'm getting a nice, neat little chart where everything in red is for Washington, everything in orange is for Oregon, and everything in blue is for California. Simple, easy, it worked perfectly. And if I wanna switch the rows and columns around, now I've got instead, so it's the same data, it's just represented in a different way. So here it's got all of Washington's information, all of Oregon's information and all of California's information. And if I want to change the type, if I want it to go to, to columns instead, I can do the same, right? And again, I can switch this around if I wanted to. Simple and easy, but it, it took me a little time in order to organize my data the way I wanted to. Another thing that you need to know is you don't need to leave your chart on this same sheet. You can move it to another sheet. So I should be able to just click this button and ask for it to go onto a new sheet called chart two, or I can call it whatever I want. I can call it uh, revenue. And then hit okay. And oh, I can't, I gotta give it another name. Revenue chart. And now it'll show up on here. Now, <clears throat> There are several, you have two toolbars with charting, so you have a lot of options that are available to you, and I don't want to go over every single thing because this video is going to be uh, really long. However, understand that you've got chart elements here that you can you can edit and change. Um, chart title, so now we have a chart title above the chart. It could be, you can change the size, you can ask for none, and you have more title options, and you can, you can double click in most of these and, and change them if you wanted to, right? So I didn't want to get into too much of that. However, I can change this and call it anything I want, right? So I've changed that. And I, be I believe you can edit most things. Um, but again, I want to keep this somewhat brief. 
Uh, remember, you've got layout options here, which are very interesting. Okay, and you would pick the one that you want. You got your different formats. You got different colors. Um, if you decide you want to change the data from here, you can. I don't find this incredibly useful. But to be honest, I'd rather start over. But you do have these options, which I find to be uh, more confusing than worthwhile. So, um, so you got design and you got format. And again, this is these are just tools that you can use to change the uh, the formatting of certain labels um, and those kind of things. Now, at the risk of repeating myself, I just want to reiterate that it's it's critical that when you're charting, uh, you understand that you want titles and totals as much as possible. You're using your control key to do that. And once, as long as you've selected the data properly, and here I haven't, as long as you've selected the data properly, your charting should work. Now, if if, if your chart doesn't look good right off the bat, it, it it's not going to get any better. I would just simply start over and work on what you've got selected for data. So you, from your preview here, if you don't have something that looks like a chart, you don't have the right data selected. You, you probably just need to start over with your selection.